and uh, just in sorting all these out and figuring out making changes it just take months and months of doing this so a lot of these can be avoided if you were to follow some of the steps uh, <clears throat> that's the talk about the traditional approach versus uh, how things are done in my 35 years of existence in plastics industry and working with many companies and new product development project i've come across innumerable projects that were delayed so long that we missed the window of opportunity to market the product and eventually the project had to be scrapped and even if it made it to the market the rate of premature product failure was so high that it had to be pulled off the market so what do you think were the underlying reasons for such travesty well we'll discuss these in few minutes but let's first talk about how most companies approach new product design and development cycle the traditional approach <clears throat> the part or product is designed manually or most people have switched to CAD with minimum information on the drawing about material and few other requirements and then it's sent to tool maker to coat the coat and build the tooling once the tooling is completed they jump right to the production and then how it goes to the market the, what happens then is that you have cost overruns rework loops and premature failures and so on <clears throat> so how can you avoid all these things well <clears throat> these are the this is the systematic approach and we have here we have 12 distinct or clear cut steps starts with the basic part design you move on to material selection the structural analysis then you go to mold flow analysis build a rapid prototype review the design based on the results from the prototype and then make some changes and make a single cavity 